Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Scotiabank closed its new Kingston branch this morning after one of the two confirmed local coronavirus patients visited the branch and was in contact with some staff members. In a media release this morning, the bank says as a precaution, staff members who came in contact with the person have been asked to self-isolate for 14 days. Scotiabank Vice President of Public Affairs and Communications, Yannick Forbes-Patrick, says the new Kingston branch will be professionally cleaned and disinfected and will not reopen until it is safe to do so. She says the bank will be working with the Ministry of Health to get staff members tested and ensure that all appropriate protocols are observed. Customers who need in-branch services are being asked to visit other branches that are convenient to them or use online platforms. In the meantime, the government is warning that restrictions on public gatherings will be heightened if local transmission of the COVID-19 virus is detected. A ban has already been imposed on public gatherings and the permits for events scheduled for the next two weeks have been cancelled. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said if test results due today confirm that the virus is spreading locally, the restrictions announced by the Prime Minister will be enhanced. And it is for a very simple reason. It is not because we want to restrict anybody's rights to their choices in life. Uh, it's a simple reason. The formula for defeating this virus in the shortest possible time is to reduce the risk of human-to-human -human transmission. That's really what it's about. So the more you congregate, the more you spread. The less you congregate, the harder it is for the virus to spread. Now, the government is awaiting five test results, and those results should be ready later today. And faced with the possibility of rapidly increasing cases of COVID-19 in Jamaica, the health ministry has responded to concerns about its ability to test multiple individuals. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie expressed confidence that the ministry will have adequate equipment to handle the demand. In addition to the kits that we have received from PAHO, we have firm commitment of another set of kits that are to arrive shortly. And in addition to that, we have sought and have received confirmation of support from the CDC in enabling testing in Jamaica. So right now, we do not perceive that there is a shortage. We are following our testing protocols. However, those testing protocols will change as a number of cases increase. She was speaking at a press conference yesterday. Meanwhile, Minister with Responsibility for Education, Carl Samuda, said increased cases and heightened restrictions will force the closure of schools. But ahead of that decision, the ministry has been insisting that schools remain open until further notice. No unscrupulous persons have been circulating releases purporting to be from the government, advising that schools are closed. Apart from debunking that notice, the education minister says the protocols to determine when schools will be closed have been developed. He outlined them to a reporter, Dash and Hendricks. Cabinet has discussed the need to close schools in light of confirmed cases of COVID-19. Prime Minister Andrew Holness put parents on notice about the possibility. His education minister, Carl Samuda, outlined the event that would trigger such a decision. Once there is evidence of the virus being transmitted within Jamaica, Jamaican residents, then it, it would heighten the need for us to look more carefully at closing our schools. And that is something that is not a decision that is taken lightly. He said preparations have started to ensure students get their lessons if schools are closed. Teaching will take place through electronic media such as television, internet and smartphones and the measures are being put in place to ensure no student is left out. Part of the $7 billion set aside for the COVID response will go to the education sector to do that. But how long will the gates be closed? We would have to look at the period within which we do that. It would be 14 days in the first instance. That is the duration of the... the, the, the virus. So we would take it in, 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 in phases. The first phase would be to do that, but only if it is being transmitted locally.
Mr. Samuda said it may not be necessary to close all schools at once. He said if the COVID-19 virus starts spreading, he will make the determination on which schools to close. Dashan Hendricks, TVJ News. And speaking of schools, the Jamaica Teachers Association President Owen Speed is expressing disappointment that they have not been ordered closed. Mr. Speed says following visits to several institutions and consultations with teachers on Wednesday, there is now a high level of anxiety in the education sector that is not conducive to learning. We can safely say that we have had a spread of persons who came in on that flight and they are spread wide and far across the island. The teachers don't know with whom those persons come into contact and, you know, they, they will have to be looking at themselves in a serious way. They will have to think about even their own children. Hence, I don't believe that we should continue to have the schools opened at this time. In fact, I believe that we should have an immediate closure so as to give space to the Ministry of Health to conduct investigations and to do its quarantine as well as its testing. And I believe that that is the approach that we need to take as a responsible society. Meanwhile, turnout at some schools in St. Thomas was low today due to fears of the coronavirus. At 8 o'clock this morning, only one student was present at Yalas Primary School. The administrative staff and some teachers were present. Principal of the nearby Yalas High School, Mark Malavva, told our news center that only 10% of the student population showed up for classes, while about 70% of teaching staff were in attendance. A similar situation ex existed at the Morant Bay High School, where the majority of teaching staff were present with a low student population. The school's administration is in a meeting to assess the situation. And at least one high school is getting ready to utilize online classes should there be any local transmission of the COVID-19. The details in this report. Now that there are two confirmed cases of the COVID-19 in the country, concerns have heightened about transmission of the virus. Minister with Responsibility for Education, Carl Samuda, says schools will be closed if the authorities detect local transmission of the coronavirus. As a result, Teachers at the St. Jago High School in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, are being trained to use the school's online portal in the event schools are ordered closed. Principal of St. Jago High, Colette Furtado Price, says the school will go fully online at that time. Mrs. Furtado Price told our news center that a survey was conducted and gaps identified. I don't expect it to be much because um, it's something we do here at St. Jago and so but we just want to know where the gaps are. We want everybody to be um, in tune with what's happening, everyone to be on the same page to avoid the hiccups and of course we will do the sensitization of our parents so that they can they can be aware of exactly where to get the information, where the students should be getting the information, just in case so we have to stay home. Web Systems Administrator at St. Jago High School, Shane Edwards, says live teaching will take place using YouTube and Google. They would be able to do all their classes online. Our teachers are trained to use live online classrooms or online teaching methods as well as delayed methods so some of our teachers will especially when it comes to the exam students be having a live classes through means like youtube live and google meet as well as we are able to provide um learning through moodle we have a moodle platform that's known as the san diego vle where teachers are able to set up their classes, provide notes, provide training material, and also able to test the students and provide them with feedback. So far, one university has started using online media. On Tuesday, the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, announced that it will now resort to online lectures to allay COVID-19 concerns. Prince Moore, TVJ News. And we take a break. More news after these messages.
Welcome back. Continuing the news. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark is defending the decision to roll back a general consumption tax GCT. This amidst claims that a further increase in the income tax threshold could have sufficed. The minister was responding to journalists at a post-budget press briefing Wednesday morning. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the GCT rollback announced yesterday was a strategic decision. He says while consideration was given for income tax give back, it wouldn't have benefited most Jamaicans. When you're going to you know, pay back $73 billion, having reintegrated public bodies and listed pub, uh, other public bodies on the stock exchange, it's important that you find a channel through it that is as broad as possible, okay? Only 80,000 people or 90,000 people approximately, please, approximately, are paying, uh, who benefit from a PIT reduction, whereas 2.7 million people benefit from, or what, not 2.7, but because there are children in that, but everybody uh, benefits from a GCT reduction. And there's a, a imperative to be as broad as possible with a reduction that's financed in this way. The minister admitted that giving up more of the revenue from income tax could do more harm than good. It still accounts for multiple billions of dollars. So it's not that simple to uh, do away with it entirely. Um, that will have to come in time. At the same time, he stressed that an income tax give back is not off the table, but he knows that it will have to be done in stages. Uh, we can't do everything one time. We do things in phases. Uh, in 2016 and 2017, we'd have reduced a dramatic increase in the threshold, which would have removed uh, a couple of hundred thousand people uh, out of the scope of income taxes. and. You know, we have one of the highest thresholds uh, in, the, in the Caribbean. The last time the government gave an income tax relief was in 2017, when the threshold was raised to $1.5 million, benefiting about 469,000 Jamaicans. Andrew Laidley, TVJ News. Meanwhile, the government will be rolling out an $800 million social pension for the elderly. In his opening budget presentation, the finance minister also announced a cut in the asset tax and fees associated with agriculture. More from Andrew Chisholm. Jamaica is moving up and up and moving and up and up and moving in the right direction, Mr. Speaker. One such direction, debt payment. Jamaica has been able to repay more than planned, leading to a few givebacks. In addition to a 1.5% cut in GCT, bringing it to 15%, the asset tax on financial institutions has also been cut in half to 0.25%. For micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, Effective calendar year 2020, we introduced for the very first time in Jamaica, Mr. Speaker, the MSME tax credit that will provide a tax credit of $375,000 to every micro, small, and medium-sized business that files taxes in Jamaica. Those who do business with the Jamaica Agricultural Commodities Regulatory Authority will also pay less fees, that is, persons in the cocoa, coconut, coffee, and spice industries. That effective April 1st, we will reduce jackra fees in aggregate, that's what I can speak to today, by 50%, and the gap created will be financed by a subvention to the supplementary budget process. Meanwhile, with some Jamaicans being unable to participate in the national insurance scheme, government will be rolling out an $800 million social pension for the elderly. Who are not in receipt of PATH, who are not on NIS, and who don't have a private pension. The benefit level has to be less than NIS, clearly, and the age at which one qualifies can't be the same age as NIS because it would create perverse disincentives. A gully intervention program will also come on stream to clean up gullies across the island. It will focus on settlements across the banks of gullies, most of which are difficult, if not impossible, for garbage trucks to go. 
The NMSWA will recruit people from these communities, will train them as environmental wardens, and task them to supervise the solids with solid waste management in their area. That program will be managed by the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. Time out for sports. Goals from Jordan Fletcher and Kemar Beckford carried the Reggae Boys to a 2-0 win over Bermuda in their friendly international on Wednesday night at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. Fletcher gave the Jamaicans the lead in the 41st minute with his first goal for the country before Beckford scored on debut in the 79th minute. Beckford is the leading scorer in the RSPL with 14 goals so far. The results saw the Reggae Boys extend their unbeaten run to seven matches while also remaining unbeaten against the Merbunids in the international matches. The head-to-head -head now stands at four wins, three draws and no defeats in favor of the Reggae Boys. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for a primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.